All right, that sounds perfect. We will call the meeting to order at 11.05. Um, and we will, we don't have to call for attendance because um, our clerk is gonna do that based on who has signed in to the meeting. Um, but I do want everyone to take a minute if they haven't already done it to review the meeting um, minutes from August the 9th, 2022. And that would have been our full task force meeting. At what point do you want to do? Um, um, you can start right now. Okay. I just, I don't believe that my name is on the list as being in attendance. I was in that, at attendance in that meeting. I did miss the uh, committee meeting that uh, Lilana put on, but uh, so if you could reflect that in the record, I would appreciate it. Okay. Anyone else have any um, revisions, corrections, additions? Is there a motion to approve the minutes with the addition of um, Kevin being added? Kevin, what's your last name? McConnell. So move. So move. Yes. Second. Did I hear the second? Second, yeah. One of us. Approval of the minutes, including the one edition. Please let it be known by saying A. Mm -hmm. hey. Any nays? All right, as y'all can tell, I'm super consensus minded and um, not too much of a stickler. Next, we're going to get to our committee reports. And I'm going to tell y'all, I'm really excited about the committee reports because I did not attend any of them. And so um, I really, this is what I'm hoping it worked, but I kind of felt like maybe if you all had committee meetings without me in there, um, it would spur more discussion. And, I, um, and if you, you know, if you want to talk about me, you could, and, and you'd have some more freedom. So we're going to start with the um, advocacy committee report with Mr. Dylan Gunnels. And I think I saw Dylan. Yes, Dylan. I'm, oh, there, there we go. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I couldn't get my camera on. Good morning. Uh, um, yes, we may before the hurricanes here in Colombia. And um, it was a great, great session. Uh, um, we started off with five, and we've now pared them down to three. Uh, um, but the three, three still trying to accomplish with that pairing them down would make them more realistic and attainable. And also because two of the first goals were related to education. And so we just kind of nailed it down into number one goal, develop an education campaign. And so within develop education campaign, we will focus on landlords, tenants, and elected officials. And so it was still relevant to everything that we kind of had in the other two goals, but this just pairs it down and gives us a little bit more specifics. And then also within that education campaign, we will, of course, continue to partner with the city of Columbia on the fair housing campaign. And y'all have to excuse me, my allergies with this weather change are killing me. <clears throat> so if I lose my voice in the middle, I'll turn it over to Miss Bean. <laughs> uh, uh, um, but we're doing that with this create the housing justice directory. And so we originally were calling this a housing directory and there was a lot of confusion about what that meant. Um, and we clarified in our uh, committee meeting that that wasn't relevant to the resources that are available to the general public. It was relevant to the resources and the shared resources that we have here as a network. And so we changed the title to housing justice directory. Um, because all of us in this room in some way are doing something relevant to housing justice. And so this is a directory for us to share our resources and know what events, workshops, um, resources, <coughs> opportunities we're offering amidst uh, the group as a whole. And we're also going to be doing some research around, you know, Sue Berkowitz mentioned like a, 
a shared calendar. And we know that we've kind of tried that before, but it's not always the most ideal. Um, so trying to research also, are there other platforms out there? Are there things that we could put together that would be an easier way of sharing all of these, this information other than just a shared calendar? And then our third goal, of course, is to be in court. And so within uh, goal number one, uh, Superkowitz and Yvonne Dabin kind of took the lead on, on goal number one and our storytelling aspect of the education campaign. And so they're trying to get together and pull resources and collaborate with folks to create a video that really tells the story. The story. And let them, so they're, they're kind of taking the lead and working on that, but we definitely want to partner with the city of Columbia's communications department, or even with the housing authority has a wonderful communications department as well. Somebody to help us put together some of that, the, the video and the marketing. And the, the idea again is just to really tell a story with that. Um, <clears throat> we also talked about from the education perspective, that we want to follow up with uh, Brenda and Jennifer. Let me see Jennifer here. So I'll, I'll chat with you uh, committee within all of this. And you guys have started putting together a list of contacts and resources. So we wanted to see if we could get with y'all to pull that list um, and see if it would be helpful with anything that we're trying to do there. Um, Appleseed with Sue Berkowitz is already putting together a housing court and they're partnering with uh, the folks down in Charleston to make that happen. And they've also just hired a housing justice organizer. Um, and so between those two things, they're able to really take charge and take the lead on that. But our committee is going to help. Support. And Dylan, yeah. I should say, that's, I just want to introduce Dylan and Emily Blackshire, who is actually our oh, yeah. housing justice um, attorney who's going to be doing this work with us. So um, she just started last last week. Welcome. Sorry, Tina, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, that's what I was going to say. And we have that person here. So no, perfect. Well, good. I'm happy to meet you too, Emily. Thanks. Um, so they're going to be working on that. And again, I'm just giving the, the general overview. And then if anybody else on the committee wants to add, please jump in. I'm almost finished. Um, but that's related to the housing court. Um, and then myself and Jeff Armstrong are taking the lead on the housing justice directory. And so we're gonna, we've been doing some preliminary research on trying to find different platforms and we're gonna come together and figure out exactly again, how we can share those resources amongst each other. And then the last thing just to uh, put on everybody's radar, but also for us from an education perspective, November 12th through the 20th is Hunger and Homelessness Awareness Week. And so we're being realistic and know that we might not have a video done in time for that, um, but there's a lot of events uh, and social media blasts and different things around that time period. So we'd really love to have something put together by then so that we can take advantage of that week to, to share our message, um, not only about affordable housing in the Midlands and, and the city of Columbia, but also what this task force is doing as well. The name of the it week is November twelfth through the twentieth, and that is Hunger and Homelessness Awareness Week. So that's all I got on my notes, um, ladies. Did y'all have anything to add? Uh, I will add just one thing. Um, after saying first that you did a fantastic job, Dylan, of summarizing our meeting. Um, the only uh, thing that wasn't mentioned is that we are uh, planning on reaching out to you, uh, Councilwoman Herbert, in, re in reference to uh, potential resources to assist with um, the affordable housing uh, presentation that we'd like to, to see come and, together. And that was actually going to be my follow-up question, um, identifying specifically what you may need staff um, support for or resources. Right. Um, I will tell you that I did talk to our internal folks as well as um, 
a, a advertising marketing agency just to kind of get some ideas of the various ways that we could approach this. Um, digital media seems to be really cool. Um, and then, so we will have to make some decision points um, about, you know, I would assume we want professional right. professional videos. Absolutely. Gotta have professional videos and we want, you know, professional um, materials. Right. Um, it's kind of like the way I go. So um, I have that on my list to discuss with the city manager, but I went ahead and talked to, to the two different people because I was really trying to get a dollar, you know, what did they think we would need? But what they really did say was that, um, with how digital is working, it's so much, it's less expensive than I was thinking. And everything doesn't have to be on TV because, you know, I was thinking TV ads and so forth. And then I was reminded, I'm just kind of old school. So um, what I have here, I'm sorry. No, go that's ahead. great to hear that you've already started having those conversations. So good. I had to because you might have missed it but Ward Mungo called me yesterday to see where we were <laughs> with this awareness campaign so I had to make a few calls to make sure I had something you know something valuable to say today so um, I did make those calls um, to kind of get an idea um, but I mean we can do we could probably spend a few thousand dollars to you know to 20 or 30 thousand dollars um, but TV is probably the thing that that eats up most of your money and I don't know if we really need to do TV, no. especially when I'm looking at it's we're looking at landlords, tenants, and elected officials, as opposed to necessarily general population. Well, and I think, think I about be. think about where all the negativity occurs as well with development. It, it's not on TV; it's on social media. Mm -hmm. um, so if you can hit all those channels. I think you're much. You're, you're going to cast a much broader net. I mean, I don't watch yeah. local TV. Um, just honestly speaking, I'll go search the headlines for what yeah. matters to me. But I, I'm not going to get caught up and um, you know watching that for 30 minutes. And I think that that's kind of where people are going to. Yeah, that and that's what that's why it's always good to ask you know different people in those industries to kind of get. Um, um, you know, where people are. And by far, although it used to be, um, yeah, Allison Teresia says on um, Facebook. And although, you know, some of the younger folks don't do Facebook as much, Facebook is still the dominant um, platform these days. Yeah, I read something recently that said Facebook is the number one go-to for mm -hmm. information, but they mm -hmm. say TikTok is, is climbing. Yeah. Um, so, well, I think... Well, I think if you hit Facebook, because Facebook, you know, is all part of the whole meta, the meta platform now. So, you know, people's books and Instagrams yeah. cross paths. And if you hit that and, you know, maybe a TikTok think, just to get, yeah. because I think, you know, as well, that's one of the other professional networking site that's very popular. Oh, LinkedIn, too. yes. Yeah. <clears throat> well, but I think, sorry. Well, I was just but I think, to... though, it, it would be good, though, to just, and I don't think we spend a lot of time here, but plant the seeds into to the younger generations that may be watching the TikToks. Um, you know, their parents may be sitting around the dinner table yelling and complaining about this new development um, or, you know, affordable housing development. Or I don't want these people coming around, but then they see something on TikTok that's different. They go and ask their parents the hard question. Yeah, I agree. And and I, I think too, we're trying to change mindsets and mentality. Um, and that that's kind of a little bit of everywhere. But I think the, the best part about it is it's just not really expensive right. to do. Have, and so have we all seen quality what stuff. Apple C did with Snap. Go look on Instagram the the campaign that has been done with for snap and how it was done it's in, it's pretty incredible and how the the narrative has been woven so that it's not just about those who use snap it's about the grocer and the farmers and you know and i know you know sue you can probably speak to how that came about because i know it, you know it's it's 
re, it was regional, but um, the, just the it's, way it's this, actually national, it's going national, was it, was it? and it was by a national partner, and the budget that they had would be even something the city would be willing to, or be in a position to, especially by November 12th, so yeah. But, uh, but but even just the, the 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 way the story was told, I guess, is more more my point that it wasn't. Um, yeah, uh, what I'm trying to say though is there were folks that were paid a good bit of money to put all that and do all that work and get that story told. So I want to manage expectations right, right. No, as much no, no, no. as possible. Agreed. So you you saw, you all show up and 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 speak. You know, yeah, I, I just want to make sure you understand all that our partner group did to, to make that. These people came in. No, I, no and I just, I guess my us. point, my yeah. point was, is, is the way, the, okay. the way the story, the way the story was told. Yeah, yeah, um, no, but it, it takes a lot of, I, I just, it, I don't want people to think that we are in the position to make that happen for everybody yes oh yeah because it's a lot yeah yeah and, um, and just for clarity but, but we were, is, hold on um, one second lila anna okay, yeah sorry. i don't think we were saying it we thought apple seed was going to do that for well, us but the example was pretty yeah cool. no 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 i just want to manage expectations about what the resources that were brought to make that all hacks uh like you said, it can be a couple thousand, uh, you know, forty, fifty thousand um, dollars. And I, I, if the city can has those resources, that would be great. Um, I just want to make sure we manage expectations of what it took to put all that together, resource wise. Okay. The the other thing I was just going to throw out there and, and run <laughs> was, um, and I know. Uh, I'm looking for the name of Kevin still on here. The the press release that went out about the Bull Street development and the use of attainable versus affordable, and the the um, the just the the change in the story overnight. Um, and I know we don't want to get bogged down in that conversation today, but it is something to out there slowly and to talk about attainable housing versus affordable housing um so anyway like i said i'm throwing that one and running back to my side of the aisle for the other committee but anyway um uh little line if i can make two quick points uh one that wasn't my idea that was the mayor's idea i can't take credit for it and number two um the when they came across and people asked questions about attainable, I think we need to work on a definition, a better definition for that. Uh, Cause I got a lot of questions. Um, and because we did have a wider income than just uh, maxing out at 60% AMI, uh, I, I was able to use that kind of as my explanation is it, it serves a little bit wider band of people um, than just up to 60% of AMI. So that's my two cents on that. Thank you. All right. And I think we'll close this out. Oh, two things. Um, um, we need to make sure that we do a proclamation. Um, that's why we have Erica on this call um, for, for the hunger and, and homelessness um, week. Um, and so if we can get, Erica will, if you'll let us know the appropriate agenda, um, whichever time is good, and we can make sure everyone knows and whoever wants to come that. That is the, when you talk about the very least you can do, that is the very least we can do. Um, let's get a proclamation together and we will, it's actually very, um, possible and I think that we will probably have several different ones okay so um we will I will get with communications on that one to kind of see what we do I know who's that was that was Miss Bean and who else so, for the video and yes. Sue okay 
All right. So um, thank you all so much. Ms. Herbert, if I could so add just important. quickly, if that's okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, there is a local homeless coalition and they are, uh, there's, I think Jeff Armstrong is actually chairing that committee as well. Um, he's on the call today, but they're planning a prayer breakfast on the 18th. I've dropped information in the chat and I emailed the flyer over to Erica if you're uh interested in sharing that with the group. Um, historically, they have always done a proclamation, so we're happy to uh, send that language over um, if you'd like to have that. Okay, so then it, anyway, to the city. It should be. Jeff is chairing okay. that committee, um, and I haven't attended that meeting. That's just not a committee I'm on, but we can certainly make sure that they get that uh, to the city. I'm trying to see if I see Jeff. I don't, I don't think I don't think so. But yeah, we I'll court we'll I'll have a staff person coordinate with them. Okay. He's at the National Family Promise Conference. So he's not on the meeting. Yes. Thanks, everybody. Yes, he's at the conference. All right. Well, that was great. Thank y'all for that report. I'm excited. Um and then the next report. Reporters from the development committee. No, we don't have chairs because no one volunteered to be a chair, but um, Lila, Anna, and Dylan, they volunteered to at least get a meeting set. So I'm going to turn it over to Ms. Lila, Anna um, for the development committee. Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to let Ward be my, my co chair um, because we're going to keep each other honest and accountable. Wait, wait, wait. Let me stop. Um, so we, do we have two co chairs for the committee? Because I will write that down right now. <laughs> it's Ward, you want to be my co chair? <laughs> Harvard, sure. All right, you've got Voluntold. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> um, so we kind of started the same way. Um, we kind of went over uh, the, the the priorities that had been discussed previously and um, did the same thing. We we fine tuned and narrowed. Um, the the one thing that we all agreed on was the, the idea of the market analysis. Um, everything we need to we need to talk about and do needs to be based on data. Um, the good news is, um, and check me ward, the SC Home Builders Association um, on behalf of SC State Housing with the help of Darla Moore School of Business, hopefully in the next right. three weeks, we'll have the, the analysis that historically everybody has used. Okay. Um, so it won't, look like we have to go out and pull data. Um, it will be something that's um, beneficial and unbiased and can be used by all of us. Um, this is the, the data that comes out every two years. Um, I, we all talk about Brian Grady. This is what he used to do. Um, so I think, Ward, you're thinking in the next, next three weeks? That's that what I'm hearing. You know, okay. I, I've got limited control and the timing, um, you know, um, 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 which I certainly will, and that's what we're shooting for. That, that coupled with, you know, data that we, the housing authority here in town with their waiting list, et cetera, um, you'll, you'll have everything from 30% to 120%. So, you know, this is what you use moving forward when you talk about the, the entire picture the need for affordable, attainable housing for the city. Um, so that was that was the first kind of piece of business, um, knowing that we don't need to come back to the greater group and say, we need to do this ourselves. Um, the second thing we kind of wanted to dig deeper into were the capital opportunities. Um, so we talked about some deadlines that were approaching. Um, the fact that with tax credits or with a lot of the, the funding that's gonna come down through state housing, um, the transparency and the regs are going to disqualify a lot of the smaller agency. What we are considering to be the church-driven CDCs um, from applying. So that kind of um, calls the group to say a deeper dive would be look Building for I know that we had talked about the church drill, um, but again, a look of capacity building than teaching them how to build houses. Because step one is this is what a nonprofit. 
This is what your are to hold is going to be. This is what finding a partner looks like. Um, so, you know, as churches start land banking, do they need to be the ones actually building the houses? Um, so baby steps versus we're going to run marathons. Um, we also talked about Hold on one second. Sorry. Yeah. So just for my clarity, um, you all felt like the, the, um, capacity building is is where the where the most need is. Correct. They don't get so that. a lot of them may have two to three anyway. board members, and they, they may be all at the church, all at the church, and all family members. Mm -hmm. So how do you help them understand that you need a functioning board of direct? Um, so again, it's baby steps before you can run the marathon. Um, helping them understand what it looks like to do an application to build housing. That it, it's not as simple as we have, we have a half acre lot and we're gonna just go out and hire a subcontractor that we may know. So capacity building first, followed by how you would actually develop the affordable housing. Um, we also talked about the proposed changes to the, um, the rehab and renovation program that a lot of the smaller CDCs use that comes through SC State Housing. Um, SCASAD, Bernie Mazik's group has created a pretty strong two pager with the high level details of that, that um, we're kind of starting to advocate um, on the state level about these changes. Uh, it, it's adding layers of, of inspections. Um, again, the smaller CDCs may not have the capacity to take advantage of that program moving forward. So it was getting that information out. Um, and then, you know, we kind of circled back to this idea of capital for developers on a larger scale. Well, capital, as far as money is not there, what kind of incentives could be? So the finding other programs in other cities that have worked. Um, I think I actually used what I said, wave fees. And it was like, no, we can't do that. And I said, okay, so we're not gonna say wave fees, but what are other cities doing that make it attractive to affordable housing developers to build units, period? Because it costs a lot of money right now to build affordable housing units. Um, so doing a deeper dive into those programs and case studies, best practices that we're seeing across the country. Um, I have a question on that one. Mm -hmm. um, just on the terminology. Um, are we, thank you, Ms. Beam. I see you have to go. Um, are we looking to, are we targeting with these, when we're looking at benchmarking other cities, are we specifically targeting affordable housing developers? Or are we targeting developers, period, and we want to make sure we get more affordable housing? Because I think that's a distinction. So I guess in my mind, and Ward, you might be able to answer this question better than me, you can be a housing developer incentivized to include affordable units. Sure. Right. Um, I think a big challenge is that, you know, what a what level of affordability are we going to tackle? Um, you know, sure, with the right incentive, of an affordable developer may be able to hit work for, or, or excuse me, a market rate developer may be able to hit the workforce levels, but tapping into the affordable, you know, the markets that allow developers to bring or to get into the, you know, the tax credits, the 60% and the 30%. Um, that's not a skill set that a typical market rate developer is going to carry. You know, they're going to need to partner with an affordable developer to make that a reality. So I think it's important to define what it is that you know we want. Um, know that ahead of time, so we you know again attract the right people. Because I kind of see it as two different opportunities. Um, definitely making sure that that the affordable housing builders can stay and do what they're doing. But I also think it's important to, in, in, 
way, however we can encourage market rate developers to have, have um, you know, some of those, some workforce affordable housing built in, because um, it just helps community-wise. Well, you, if we you need it all. Yeah. 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 It's not, you know, if you just, if you attack one, not the other, you're going to create another problem elsewhere. And that's um, what I want to make sure. So we, we do want to do both, not just one. And that's where your market analysis is going to come in. Yeah. Because what, what your what my assumption is, is it's going to show you, you need both. So as, as the city develops a plan, the plan has to include mm -hmm. Strategy, strategy for incentivizing, developing, paying for, et cetera, et cetera. Third, and I, I use 30% as the lowest. I mean, my guess is you'll have lower than that to 120% or, or whatever. Um, and then, you know, your long-term challenge will be um, going back to the other side, the other committee. So how do you also develop a plan that doesn't create the pockets of poverty or, you know, not in my backyard because you're only doing 30% here. Mm -hmm. And that's where you would, you know, bring in the inclusionary zoning and you can say, well, we're going to put 30% next to 120. And, you know, so you, you create the long-term vision of it's not all or nothing in one place or one neighborhood. I got you. Um, I think what we also said, and then this kind of um, brings it full circle and to a close, you know, we talked about doing deeper dives moving forward into, you know, the best use of condemned properties. Um, if, if there were some zoning issues that bubbled to the top, um, but kind of using this, this meeting, bringing in city staff to do deeper dives in more of an, um, an educating the group sense um, as we kind of did one subject matter at a time. Um, and that was, that's what I have as far as my notes. Did I miss anything? But the, the next big step is finding those best practices. And that's just the term I use, best programs that we could bring back here that we could use um, and waiting for this market analysis. So we really do know what you know, towards point, what are we looking at? Are we going after the 30%, the 60%, et cetera? And so- No, I agree. I think the, the study will certainly help give guidance. Okay. And I like data because, you know, whenever no one can, I mean, you can debate the data, but it's, it, data just gives us a lot of foundation. So from a, from a you need from me or the city standpoint, um, the only thing I see may be in working on getting the condemned properties list. Um, and I just wrote a note to myself, maybe by January, I'll talk to staff internally to see where we are with that. Um, but it may be something early next year um, based on how our meeting schedule is going to be too. Um, but any other things that you can think about that, that you would need from me and or staff support or otherwise? Obviously, if they know of other programs, I think we, we had some, some staff on that call that day. Um, you know, we can go out and find best practices and things that we would love to bring back to Columbia. But wow. if there are other programs that city staff has heard about, um, it would be incredibly helpful for them to kind of bring to the table. Um, okay. I do know, and I, um, Missy may, I don't know, Missy or Krista yes, may have the information. I don't know it specifically, but the Catalba project was mentioned to me as one where we did some, um, it's market rate, but we asked the developer to include some workforce housing. So, and I don't, I don't know the specifics. That, that's, that's the one sentence I know on that. Yeah, and and Miss Herbert, this is Missy. Um, yeah, that was one of the incentive projects that recent tax abatement, and one of the conditions was that they included affordable housing component um, in a certain number of units. And I would have to pull that. They have recently reached out to us to 
make sure that as they um, work on that project that they understand what that means and they're you know they're very committed to it it seems like they've done that in other communities as well so that wasn't foreign to them most of the other incentive projects um you know are around a market that targets students And some of the other developers did that with us. So they might be a good group um, for us to talk to and understand how they've made it work. Okay, sounds good. Yeah, and I need, just make a note, Missy, that Tina needs to learn more about that. Get some okay, I can that. do that. All right, so I think if anything, that would be a good thing for us to bring because it is something that the city has done um or they do it looks like we're doing it so we want to make sure it works out right all right so anything else from the committee reports and i just want to make sure y'all have told me what you need from me and what you need me to do or help with and by me i mean the entire city staff that's on the call <laughs> all right well those are great i appreciate it one of the things i wanted to do um so we have the um, columbia compass housing uh, recommendations that are part of our planning process. And I wanted to make sure that this committee is totally in line with the plans that are already there. Like we are not just doing our own dance. And so um, I asked Krista and her team. And so Ms. Lee, pronounce it? Lee will give us an update on how the, how the recommendations that we've had really fall into the plan that the city has had. Now, Lee, I realize some of them have kind of changed today, so I don't know if that impacts your presentation or not. That's fine. I, I made yeah. notes as we were going. <laughs> okay, all right. And I'm gonna turn it over to you. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. So um, I know I've talked to y'all uh, a little bit before about Columbia Compass, which is the city's comprehensive plan. Um, and we're, you know, we're really excited for the committee's work in general. I think the work of the committee aligns with the guiding principles of, of the plan, especially those in the housing chapter. So that's that one pager that, or I guess two pager that that y'all got a little bit ago to talk about as a whole kind of has these this vision for Columbia um, that's based in what we heard from, from the public and from, from council and, and from departments as well. So, um, but, um, so the, the housing chapter of the plan does have specific recommendations, but there are also some other recommendations in the plan that um, you know overlap. We, because of how the state deals with um, comprehensive planning, we have very specific elements of the comprehensive plan, but we know that land use and economic development and transportation all interrelate with, um, with housing as well. So um, that being said, I pulled together and, and as Councilwoman Herbert said, and of course this little drop down that Zoom, I don't know if y'all have this issue, but sometimes Zoom has a little drop down when you're sharing your screen and you can't click on the thing you want to click on. Um, <laughs> but I did look at what, what y'all had kind of developed at the last larger meeting um, when it came to the, um, the subcommittee goals and just tried to develop a, a brief spreadsheet that I'm sure um, Salmon will send out afterwards that looks at those those housing goals and then some of the other goals in Columbia Compass and how they align with some of the recommendations. And I don't think that, um, you know, given kind of the streamlining that each of your committees have done, it, it, it's still kind of, I think you can kind of group those of you as you have with the committees as well. So for example, um, with the development committee, so I've got two pages here um, in development committee in turquoise, um, you can see how the goals that the committee had especially aligns with the recommendations <clears throat> um, surrounding the creation of affordable units. So looking at city standards, looking at incentives, I know Dr. Salas, you just, I mean, we're just talking about incentives here. Um, and so, and looking at incentivizing those um, multi-unit housing um, opportunities as well. And then we also have some recommendations. The reason these are different colors is because um, this is the economic development 
chapter color, everything is branded in our comp plan. And then the red is the community facilities chapter, but incentivizing infill development. We recognize that we want it to be affordable or attainable, but it's also, you know, it's also about building that density in general and that will provide those opportunities. So how that overlaps with some of those other um, recommendations that are outside of the plan um, for housing specifically. Um, and then I, I should point out too that we do have some case studies with each of these recommendations. I've included that in this document as well. Helpful um, with some of the um, some of the you know looking at what other communities are doing too. So, um, so Lee, hold on. I'm you know I'm I'm challenged sometimes. No. So you said in the last two columns those were are those different recommendations or recommendations? other Columbia Compass recommendations. Yeah, there. so there are other Columbia Compass recommendations um, that are oh, under, under a different chapter. So yeah. Under a different so, chapter. So we have, um, there were about 10 plan of recommendations that we felt specifically aligned with the work of the committee. Eight of those from the housing chapter, one from economic development and one from the community facilities chapter. Um, there are a couple, other plan recommendations in the housing chapter that aren't necessarily relevant to the work of the committee, which is fine because housing is a, a, about that broader housing component, not just about affordable housing as well. So I highlighted the ones that I thought were most relevant to the work that you all are doing. But thank you, because that's I didn't clarify that very well. That's fine. Um, and, and so I, kind of what we noticed with the, you know, where those natural breaks are is with the development committee versus the advocacy committee. There's certainly some overlap, have y'all, as y'all have discussed, but the advocacy committee goals tend to align more closely with the plan recommendations that are tied to kind of that inter organizational collaboration, the outreach, education, and the building of social capital. So exactly aligning with those items. So we're spending you know, less time on the revising city standards with the advocacy committee, but more time um, developing those collaborative teams and working together um, on neighborhood assistance. Um, and then we felt that partnering with um, partnering with the Fair Housing Campaign would also help build those, those life skills um, for the tenants and, and that sort of thing as well. So um, the one thing I will say is that there is not a recommendation in the comprehensive plan tied to the establishment of a housing court. But I don't think that the spirit of that work is against anything in the comprehensive plan. Um, it's just that that's a very specific need that didn't necessarily come up in the stakeholder discussions as we were having them in 2018, um, 2019. And certainly eviction data released since then is you know, very supportive of, of the need to deal with um, that crisis as well. Um, and we know that COVID's only exacerbated that. Um, and, and so in general, um, what, what will be provided here is just kind of that, that quick cheat sheet. And then each of these relate to um, a recommendation, which we've included in more detail um, in the document. So this will be that, that first recommendation that fell, the de developed collaborative teams. It talks about a little bit about it, who might be responsible. So this kind of the stakeholders we pull together what we hope that time frame would be, um, what type of data we would need, and and how we expect to move that forward, and then measure it. So, um, it, you know, and then there's a, a case study for this next one on neighborhood assistance. So, just that giving you that background information, um, and certainly as you all move forward, if you have any questions about the specific recommendations, or if you're aware, I will. Uh, you are aware of. Um, things that are moving forward that meet with those recommendations that you'd like to see reported on. Um, we do an annual report on Columbia Compass and the implementation, and we recognize that that implementation is community-wide. So um, if there's something that I can help highlight or include, please reach out to me um, or to, to staff in general and let us know, and I'd, I'd love to talk to you more about that as well. Well, thank you, Lee. I, just so you all know, I was going to kind of do this presentation myself. Um, it just wouldn't have looked like this. And so I'm glad that I deferred um, to Lee because it, it this has a level of expertise that I have to admit that I would not have been able to bring to the presentation. 
But I will tell you all my overarching reason for doing it is making sure that this committee, that we understand that the committee is not some lone wolf just doing stuff, but we are helping the city achieve um, recommendations and goals that are a part of the plan. Um, and realistically, a lot of folks think that st city staff is supposed to implement like every plan that we have that we expect city staff to implement it and it's just not possible. Um, so task force, task force such as this help us um, implement a lot of these recommendations. So I'm super excited about that. And to me, that's just like our validation. So maybe every six months, Lee, I just wanna make sure that, that we're continuously validated in what we're doing and um, serving a purpose to help the city reach its goals with affordable housing. All right, thank you so much. With our time wise, we are perfect. I'm going to turn it over to Ms. Erica Moore to discuss the committee meeting schedule. Again, I'm in very, very sensitive people's times. Um, quick give our lives to um, Affordable Housing Task Force. Um, so, Erica, can you discuss the I can't remember what we discussed about the committee yes, meeting schedule. Yes, so, And so in terms of the committees, we felt it would be easiest for the committees to meet on the uh, Tuesday that the force would not be meeting. So for instance, next month, you're but instead of the full task force meeting, we're asking if the two committees would be available and amenable to meeting on November 8th. And then every other month, like January 10th and March uh, 14th, we can work out the times. Of course, one of you can, one group can meet at 11. Uh, the other group will need to work on the best time that works for the, um, for the rest of your schedules. And not now I'm rem remembering that I don't have to be a part of it. Councilwoman Herbert can choose to be a part of it, but based on our schedules, I was struggling with another time. And so again, one committee could meet on November 8th at 11. Another committee could meet at 9, 1. You could meet at the same times if it's two different groups of people, you could uh, meet at the same time. But I do know that Ms. Bean serves on both of these. Um, I recommend that you meet in the same spot that we would meet the second Tuesday of every month. And just for background purposes too, what we realized is it was a little bit of work for you all trying to schedule your committee meetings. And if we were gonna do them every other month, why not use this time slot right here? Um, that's kind of where we were going, at least for one committee meeting, just use this time slot so that you don't have to keep coming up with a time slot. So I'm hoping that that, that is amenable um, to both of the committees, um, but just know that you can use that. And then I think as far as the schedule for the year, um, I think our intent was not to meet in December. That's correct. At all. I mean, the committees can meet if they want to. Um, <laughs> any opposition to us not meeting in, no, in December and then starting off fresh with a full committee meeting in January? It will be in February. Oh, in February. Well, we can talk about that, but essentially the committee, if they don't meet um, in December, the committees would meet again in January and the oh, full okay. task force wouldn't meet again until February. So maybe we need to think that through. <clears throat> okay. Well, this time slot works, I believe it's already on the calendar. Can we have, um, is this time already standing? Say that again. I can, is this time already standing? I haven't it checked is. to see if I've got this. Yeah on future occurrences. It um, may not be on your calendar yet, but it it has been standing for quite a while. We just got started it. alternating the task force meetings. And so um, kind of doubling back on what I just said, I think January we could start fresh, Councilwoman Herbert, if you wanted to start January with a task force meeting and then February the committees would meet mm -hmm. and then we could alternate um, in 2023 in that form. I like it. I, I, you know, I want us to get things done, but I'm also cognizant of everyone's time. Um, and then I, I, I realize it's hard to get a lot of stuff done in four weeks in between um, committee meetings. So um, sometimes two months 
this is a lot more reasonable. Um, so if there are no objections, that's what we'll do. The question becomes which of these two committees is gonna, and I'll let y'all decide, take this exact time slot and then the other committee maybe take you know, an hour ahead or an hour below base. So like on my calendar, I have it blocked off, I think from 10 to 12.30 because I need prep time and you know all that kind of stuff. So uh, we're doing it so that y'all won't have to guess and try and figure out and send out, what did you send out the month, not the, the uh, schedule? The doodle, the doodle poll? Yeah, <laughs> I like doodle poll, but sometimes it's a little difficult, so. Um, that is all I have for today, and we're right on time because y'all know I am a one-hour kind of gal. Um, any con questions, concerns, ideas, anything I didn't discuss today, anything I need to be discussing or thinking about um, um, that you all can think of? I don't believe Dylan, if he's willing to continue to serve as chair. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Dylan, go ahead and recruit yourself a co-chair like Lila Anna did. <laughs> I'm on it. Yeah, it and it cold. Because all right, if all hearts and minds are clear, I, do we need a motion to adjourn from a task force meeting? Okay, I can just adjourn it. <laughs> all right, I will talk to you all soon. And um, it seems like I may be able to be on the committee meetings next time, but I think I like it when I'm not because y'all can say whatever you want to say. All right, I will see y'all next time. Thank you so much. All right, thank you. All right, thanks. Bye bye.